When old man winter rears his icy head, there's one thing that keeps Ohio from becoming a virtual slip and slide. Salt. A natural de-icer, over 17 million tons of rock salt was spread over roads and sidewalks in the United States during the particularly fierce winter of 2015. But where does it all come from? The answer might surprise you. Right now we're in the Whiskey Island mine, 1,800 feet below Lake Erie, but we're mining salt for the purposes of road de-icing. Last year we mined a little over 3 million tons um, in a pretty mild winter. Uh, in a normal winter we'll do about 4 million tons a year. Ohio is one of the top exporters of salt in the country, and it's actually mined right under our noses in places like Cargill's Whiskey Island Salt Mine. The 12 square mile mine lies just offshore of downtown Cleveland. Lake Erie is the shallowest of the Great Lakes, with a depth of about 56 feet near Cleveland. The salt mine lies about 1,800 feet under the lake. One of the reasons we mine under Lake Erie uh, is because of only having to deal with a single landowner, which is the state of Ohio, versus under land you're dealing with multiple landowners of different pieces of property. We use a conventional drill and blast method of mining. Once we blast the salt out of the ground, uh, we go ahead and scoop it up and put it on the belt lines to uh, be sent to the mill for processing. A system of conveyor belts and elevators bring the salt to the surface. Left behind are gigantic pillars of salt. These support the weight of thousands of feet of rock and lake above the mine. Engineers like Bob calculate the size and number of pillars needed to keep the mine safe. As an engineer, in a typical scenario, you get to kind of choose materials and build what you want uh, in an underground operation. Uh, what you have is the earth, and it's a, it's a fun and interesting problem. But wait, let's back up a minute. How did all this salt get here, almost 2,000 feet under Lake Erie? To answer that question, we headed to Cleveland's Museum of Natural History to talk to expert Harvey Webster. Well, it turns out that there's lots of rock underneath Lake Erie. And if you started digging at the bottom of Lake Erie and you went through the sediments, you'd come to a variety of rocks, shales, things that you would see in any kind of river cut. But as you go further and further down, you start encountering rocks like limestones. If you get 1,700 feet below Lake Erie, you will encounter a formation of rock salt. It's called the Salina Formation, and it's actually layers of salt. When we think about what Ohio was like back in the Silurian period, 408 million years ago, it turns out it was wet. We were under a shallow sea. Um, and all of the rocks that underlie the city of Cleveland, no matter how deep you go, they were all deposited in water. Now the curious thing is we always think, well, you know, Cleveland, Ohio has always been north of the equator. It's been in a temperate location kind of forever, right? And the answer is no. It turns out that North America, like all the other continents, has moved across the planet. And at the time of the Silurian, 400 million years ago, Cleveland, Ohio would have been about a thousand miles south of the equator in shallow tropical conditions. So Ohio was tropical. Oh yeah, and covered in a shallow sea. And its inhabitants are not the kind of thing you see strolling in downtown Cleveland today. Eventually, these tropical conditions and some overgrown coral reefs caused the sea to dry up, leaving the salt behind. And it would get saltier and saltier and saltier until finally the salt literally settles right out of that water and forms rock salt. And this happened thousands, tens of thousands of times. And each time it happened, it would add a new layer to the rock column. And so if you went to the Cargill mine, and when you look at the walls, you'll see these alternating bands. Each one of those layers is like a chapter in the history of the world, right here in Cleveland, as it existed 400 million years ago. The salt mine looks like another world, and it really is one. It's the remains of a world that existed long before man. But even if you never get down to the mine, you'll still see pieces of this world scattered on icy roads all winter long.